Hello, my name is Artem Barman, and I want to tell you a story about how we decided to do something useful for closure community, how we changed our mindset of finding the ideas, uh, how we took a lot of marketing and product management instruments and applied it to the closure popularity problem. But now I want to tell you a bit about myself. I started my journey as a developer and uh, I was a Java developer for three years. Then I moved to the closure production development and made several projects uh, in closure. And then we, together with my friends, decided to create a startup and ended up in a company that doing service uh, and uh, augmenting teams for the external companies. So I like a lot also uh, marketing and product management. And basically already for five years, I'm not a software developer already. Uh, that's why I decided to use my newly acquired skills for doing something useful for closure community and not to go from the technical side, but to go more from, uh, you know, business side and uh, watch uh, on the problems from other perspective. Uh, also, one of my biggest uh, happiness in life is applying different mental models in a different domain so try to transfer them from one domain to the other domain and see how it performs i want to mention our team without these people uh, it wouldn't be possible to do everything that we've done already so i work as just a presenter and maybe one of the guys that uh, manage the vision and ideas but uh, most of the job is done by inna vladimir ilshad and gleb uh, vladimir is uh, so a closure developer one of our projects ilshad is also Gleb is responsible for creating the platform that I will show you a bit later. And Inna, uh, she's a product uh, manager and project manager of this uh, whole process. So let me tell you about the idea and how we found uh, what useful can be done for the closure community. Initially, we started with the idea about the library or some open source solution that can be used in the closure projects or not closure projects and to go in this area. But then we recalled that uh, the better uh, to ask people what do they need? That's why we use techniques from the product management, applied it to the community conversation and extract some pain points and friction points uh, that community have with closure, closure itself. So everything was done by Inna and Vladimir. They uh, do this marketing and product management job. And uh, let me tell you a bit more about the process. So initially, we conducted a survey among the closure community. We gathered 52 responses uh, that highlighted that uh, one of the main reasons of closure unpopularity, the people answered this, they, they, they shared their ideas, is that uh, too many libraries and uh, too many tooling is existing for the closure. And that make uh, onboarding process for the newcomers much more harder than in other languages that, ha that have usually one or two solutions uh, that are used common uh, in the whole industry. And also it had a lot of other consequences a bit later about them. The second step was in-depth interview with the closure developers. So we formulated a hypothesis about the problem of choosing libraries and making decisions and searching and benchmarking. That's why we came with this hypothesis to, to the people and uh, made a set of 14 interviews, uh, each one hour long, about the process, how they actually do this job, how they actually perform in the library selection, how they navigate in the ecosystem. And uh, 10 of 14 of these interviews uh, have actually proved that uh, this idea uh, and this problem is exist in a community. The very important part of this problem is that to become closure more popular, to start and uh, improve the external marketing 
for the people that are not familiar with Clojure, we initially need to do something, some internal improvements. So when they get to know the closure, when they try to start a project, they need to be able to start it without any friction points as much as possible. So all tooling, libraries, ecosystems should be perfect. And that's, that's one of the first steps to make a closure more popular. Okay, so let me tell about the found idea. Uh, and that's actually marketing for a closure and removing all friction points on the way of a developer inside the language. If you would just spread the word about the closure on different con conferences, you know, creating content and try to make it, try to make people aware of it without paying attention to internal friction points, a lot of people can try closure, uh, but they would break on the later stages and they will lost for us. And in the worst scenario, uh, they will become a negative referral and it make negative viral effect for the closure. So people that are not satisfied, they will go out and they will tell that closure is have rather bad uh, library support or it's hard to navigate in the language itself. That's why we decided to go with a customer journey for developers inside the language and find some friction points. So let me apply a first mental model from product management is 3A, 3R funnel. And I want to apply it to the language adoption and language choosing as a developer. And uh, basically it consists of uh, six steps. Uh, first one is awareness. Uh, when someone is get to know the closure, uh, hear about it on some conference, and we need here the very wide spreading of the information about the closure. Second step is acquisition. So how many people will hear about closure and will go to closure org or will try to find some uh, tutorials or courses that uh, can help them. Third one is an activation. So activation is when someone spends some time on course and get to know the syntax and try to do something in Clojure, maybe pet project or small production task. And uh, this part, uh, from my point of view and what we've discussed, is one of the most important parts in a Clojure because uh, newcomers have a lot of troubles when they meet the closure ecosystem, they meet the Lisp course, and they understand that too many libraries is, is exist for each problem. And that's uh, make language onboarding and language activation is much harder for newcomers. The, third one, uh, the fourth one is a revenue, when how many people will start production project in their, in their jobs, retention, how many people will do the second production project or serious pet project, and referral when developer became a closure advocate, and that's the latest step of a closure. And with the last three steps, I think there is no big problems. And from my point of view and from what we've discovered during the polls and surveys and interviews is an acquisition and activation steps. So goal of our talk is to put attention on the activation uh, and help newcomers to figure out the ecosystem much faster. Interestingly, that found problem even have its own name in a Lisp, and it's called a Lisp curse. Uh, it was described in a famous article about 10 years ago, and um, it's a very good description of a state for the almost any Lisp implementation. And it has uh, very bad cons consequences for the closure because it makes much harder to do marketing among the decision makers and to to force them to use this language for the new project for the startups because of uh, because of very strange state of the ecosystem so let me tell you a bit more about the lisp curse so um, it's uh, initially caused by uh, technical excellence of uh, Lisp language itself and the closure as a, one of the Lisp implementation. 
And uh, there is no requirements for this social collaboration to do some hard tasks for, because uh, almost every developer can do uh, some hard uh, technical task by its own and no need to collaboration. And that's create a lot of concurrent implementations for the same problem. And that make it harder to navigate an ecosystem and onboard the newcomers. So f figure out what languages, what approaches is the best practices, uh, how they used. And that makes developers harder to replace. And uh, a lot of closure projects uh, have their own library sets and their own stacks. And that makes managers and decision, de decision makers harder to choose the closure for starting the projects. That's, that's the problem. So with his, we see this solution that uh, we can gently encourage in collaboration and we can gently building up the habit of scoping out the existing libraries and work before starting the new work. You probably want to say that uh, creating a new standard of closure observability or closure ecosystem will not solve the issue and i agree with you here and we understand that creating a new standard uh, among existing one will just increase number of standards and it will not solve everything but the goal of the talk is to analyze this problem in details uh, to start a discussion inside the community and uh, to suggest some social based uh, solutions like marketing and product management okay so let's move to the jobs to be done that should be covered by the system and here we two we found out the two segments of the people that uh, will be first users of a system the first one is a newcomers that wants to find out what libraries, what trends, uh, what approaches uh, in the closure exists. And the other one, the experienced people that work on a closure projects, but they are not following the ecosystem. They're not following the old use or libraries or mailing lists, but they still want to get to know that uh modern trends in the ecosystem because they change in a lot and such dynamic language as a closure so the big job for these guys is to find out the best practices and libraries in a trend actually there is a set of small jobs that's a required task that should be done to solve the big job uh, to find out the library so right now this is slack reading this is asking uh, advise us in the chats, reading the Twitter, following a lot of influencers, uh, researching the GitHub, following the mailing lists, and asking the guys, the experienced guys, uh, what they, what did they use in their projects. And there is a huge amount of activity need to be done to just uh, to keep uh, ecosystem in the mind. There is no such place. Uh, that cover the whole ecosystem. So let's move to the point A. To move somewhere, we first need to understand where we are now. And we described the how this problem is solved right now by developers in Clojure. And I already mentioned it uh, because that's reading the Slack, reading a lot of social information, reading discussion, following discussions, and following the large threads and finding out the mentions of a library, following the GitHub. So that's the point A. And uh, uh, I want to emphasize on similarities among the listed sources of information. And all of them is uh, all of them are stream based. So the information came in from experienced guys in the discussions and it quickly became not accessible because stream is just moving. There is no structure in the streams. It's uh, rather hard to navigate currently in this information. The, the, good, the good side that this information is, exists. The bad side that it's not uh, quickly accessible by newcomers. And if you want to find something in the Slack discussions, you need to know precisely what do you want to find. So it's harder to just ask the question to the system 
uh, please show me the libraries that was discussed a lot and that uh, supported a lot in, in a community. And the idea actually is to move from the stream-based information to some uh, knowledge gathering and some place that should be accessible anytime by device guy and it should be well structured much less well structured than current feeds of information from twitter slack github reddit anything okay so we discussed the point a and now we can discuss the point b this is the probable idea of what should to be done and where we want to go in a system that will be helpful for the closure ecosystem navigation. Uh, I will tell in general about the points and I will tell in the details about each point separately. So first one is the social uh, citation index. It's taken from the academic papers and academic research. The second one is a focal point. This is an idea from the game theory. That's the point where everyone goes without any pre-information. The third one is accumulation and transparency. So the knowledge should be gathering in some database that should be accessible by everyone and it should be structured. And probably there is a lot of unknown components of the system that should be created and uh, extracted from the community mind using the product management techniques like deep interviews and polls and anything else. So let me tell a bit more details uh, about each part of the system. Accumulation uh should work as uh, some place that gather all information about closure ecosystem from a github twitter reddit project clgs uh from the real production projects and maybe some other sources interesting to mention that modern B2C marketing systems have uh, this integration with Twitter and social signals, and it's quite easy for them to analyze the mentions of the brand in the whole network. And uh, we want to introduce something similar to the closure and because it looks like it's a very important way of library decision-making. And it should be uh, accessible and it should gather and not uh, disappearing after the some time. So it should not be a streaming based approach, but rather structured data based approach. The second one is a citation index and uh, I already mentioned it. And we figured out during the interviews that uh, developers use a lot of social signals to make a decision on libraries and just to look at it. And uh, we want to automate, automate this job and we want to create some uh, linked database to make it easier to find out the social signals about each library. For example, was it used in a production project or was it mentioned in a Slack in some discussion? In one context, was it mentioned? And in general, in UDL world, well, we should get something like page rank algorithm for Google, but for library. The third part of a solution uh, is not a technical one, uh, but it's social one. It's focal point. It's the concept from the game theory and that means that everybody will go to the system, to this place, uh, without any prior information and, uh, and unconditionally. And this is more a marketing task, how to promote this platform and how to pro promote this way of searching and navigating the ecosystem. And uh, here we have several instruments from a marketing and product management that can be used. Another important part of a system is a transparency. Ecosystem should become much more transparent than now. So every library, every announcement, everything should be gathered in one place and should be easily navigatable and observable. And uh, the 
interesting consequence of this uh, transparency is that we can add some metrics to the system and there is a, a interesting psychological effect when we introduce some kpi or metric and we start to watching it uh, this metric became to change and uh, usually it became to improve uh, i've seen this many times in my business work and uh, you know, transparency and, and observability of ecosystem allow us to add some interesting metrics like uh, I can suggest uh, closure ecosystem entropy score. Uh, it's uh, some integral metric that describe the uh, relation between problem and amount of solutions for this problem. And uh, in general, this should uh, be much less than current situation that's about the point a and point b and the third part of a talk is uh, uh, what instruments do we have and uh, what we can what can be used to go from point a to point b one of the useful instruments is a systematic marketing uh, it's interesting to emphasize that in closure world, uh, most of marketing is viral. So if someone is creating library uh, for library for library to become popular, it need to be so well done and so greatly fit the problem. So everyone will talk about it and will refer uh, it and will become an advocate of this library. And in this case, it became very popular and spread among the whole ecosystem. But another ability is to do a systematic marketing. Um, it doesn't mean that the idea is not very useful. It only means that we have much more control about saying and uh, about uh, educating people about the existing solution. And uh, I like a lot the example of vaccination uh, against COVID. Uh, because it's not a very popular thing, uh, but it's clearly well, very useful. And in some uh, countries, uh, governments even use marketing platforms to, to encourage people to do vaccination. So useful doesn't mean that it's go viral. Another instrument is a product management that can help us to build a new habit. Because... Uh, a uh, solution for the list course is actually building a new habit for for uh, developers. So not to create something, but to have a habit to go someplace, to look for the things that already created, look for the problems, maybe make adjustments in the library, maybe, uh, maybe improve the documentation for the library, but uh, try tend not to create something really new, that solve the same problem, just maybe in a bit different way of a different API. That's the usual thing in Clojure. Another instrument that can help us is the CGM. Uh, it's an instrument from the product management and uh, it's a customer journey map. So if we treat our developers as a customers or newcomers as a customers and we treat closure as a product, not just on the language, but the whole ecosystem, tooling and everything. And uh, we can systematically improve and remove friction points in a language adoption way. So that's also not about the luck. It's more about the system and continuous improvements. And here we can use a lot of uh, things like uh, deep interviews, like measuring metrics, uh, like analyzing the the flow, uh, how people is proceeding, the, their studying and closure, and we can systematically improve it. What we have now? Uh, we've started with a technical platform just to make something valuable that can be promoted and then can be a starting point for the for the discussion. And right now, it's a closure-based system located on a GitHub. It's an open source, and we're going to transfer ownership to, to the community. And uh, right now, it's a GitHub data extractor with automatic updates. Uh, all data is stored as uh, 
in a Postgres database system, and uh, Metabase is used as a user interface, as an MVP for user interface. It's already deployed uh, on a Closure Garden uh, URL. You can see the link on the slide. So what we are going to do next? Uh, first of all, we of course have a roadmap for developing the system further. And uh, the next big chunk and next big milestone is a gathering the social context and social signals. And first attempts to build a LibRank uh, ranking system based on the social mentions and discussion. Uh, the second one, we're going to uh, be, uh, make a public roadmap for the system. And we encourage you as a part of a community to share your ideas, and uh, to make a contribution into this project uh, from the vision side, from the understanding how it should be, or from the code side, every help would be great. And uh, we're waiting for your feedbacks uh, regarding the talk, the system, and everything on the email that you can see on a slide. And the next great, great, great part that we want to uh, spend our budgets, time, and all our forces is the marketing of this solution inside the Clojure community. Uh, it's going to be the collaboration with uh, different courses, influencers, and uh, we will try to find uh, the points of collaboration and how we can uh, make it popular and make it the focal point for the search in the library. The summary of this talk is that only by removing friction points in a developer CGM, we can make Clojure more popular. And that's the first step and many steps to come. Thank you.